Hi, my name is Michael Chang, and today I will discuss a new way of thinking about object representations as fixed points of an iterative refinement process. I will show that we can leverage this insight of object representations as fixed points to significantly improve the optimization of slot attention, a state-of-the-art object-centric learning method. As we can see on the right, the Jacobium norm of our method in blue remains stable and trains much more effectively than vanilla slot attention in red. Slot attention is an object-centric model that learns to encode visual scenes into a discrete set of representations. It is trained to function as an update rule that gets iteratively applied during execution time to update a random initial guess to produce a final representation that gets fed to downstream tasks. We can think of it as learning the update rule for an expectation maximization-like procedure, as you can see on the right. And empirically, it has been shown to decompose visual scenes into object representations without human supervision, as you can see on the left. To train vanilla slot attention, we will backpropagate gradients through the entire refinement procedure. However, this leads to difficulty and optimization, as we can see in the uncontrolled growth of the Jacobian spectral norm of the slot attention cell of slate from Sing et al. 2022, which you can see in red. In contrast, our method in blue trains much more stably. Our key insight is to note Notice that the structural similarities between slot attention and the expectation maximization algorithm suggest that slot attention might converge to a fixed point. In particular, the slots would co correspond to the parameters of a latent mixture model. This is not obvious from the implementation because slot attention introduces several components that make it different from vanilla expectation maximization that we do not yet know how to analyze theoretically. Empirically, however, we see that the forward residual of the slots remains relatively bounded which suggests that slot attention can be considered an instance of a deep equilibrium model, which are trained with implicit differentiation. Deep equilibrium models are neural networks that solve for a fixed point as an intermediate step Z star of their computation graph. One property of these models is that rather than backpropagating through the entire fixed point iteration, it is possible to just compute gradients with the implicit function theorem without needing to backprop through the iteration. Recognizing that slot attention is an instance of a deep equilibrium model expands the design space of training object-centric models beyond what is currently done, which is simply to iterate the slot attention cell during the forward pass and backprop through the unrolled iteration in the backward pass. Now we can use any roof finding solver to find the fixed point for the forward pass and use any methods to directly compute the implicit gradient in the backward pass without storing any intermediate activations in the rollout before the fixed point. The challenge is in computing the inverse Jacobian term here, which is expensive. So prior works have either approximated the term using a Neumann expansion or used a roof finding solver to solve another fixed point system. The method we found to be best in our context is to keep the forward iteration as before and use the first order Neumann approximation of the implicit gradient. This approximation is not only simplest to implement with one additional line of code, but also has the lowest time and space complexity of all the methods we tried. Concretely, we implement implicit differentiation by iterating the slot attention cell to a fixed point and backprop gradients through only one additional step of the slot attention cell by simply truncating the gradients. To test our method, we use the latest method that builds upon slot attention, the slate architecture by Singh et al. The slate architecture uses a discrete VAE to tokenize the image. It then uses a slot attention to cluster the tokens and a transformer decoder to reconstruct the tokens. I've already hinted at how implicit differentiation improves training. Now I'll talk about how it removes the need for optimization tricks. For example, if we remove gradient clipping, the validation curve for the vanilla version eventually overfits, whereas the validation curve for the implicit version learns faster and does not overfit. In fact, without gradient clipping, the Jacobium norm for the vanilla version begins to explode as training progresses. And this is reflected in the large gradient magnitudes of the vanilla version compared to the implicit version of the layer norm on the slides. When we looked at the reconstruction quality, we observed that the vanilla version sometimes misses objects, changes their size, or changes their color, whereas the implicit version generally matches the ground truth much more closely. In terms of mean squared error, the implicit version has almost a 7x improvement over its vanilla counterpart. We tested how sensitive our method is to the degree of the Neumann approximation, 
In general, our method consistently outperforms the vanilla version as long as the number of forward iterations is enough for the slots to converge. Our results also hold on other data sets, other architectures, and other tasks, such as set property prediction. In conclusion, I showed that the insight of con conceptualizing object representations as stable points of a fixed point procedure led to a novel method of training these methods based on implicit differentiation, which empirically improved optimization performance. I hope this talk inspires future work to think about object representations not as static data attributes that we produce via mappings, such as bounding boxes, but as dynamic fast weights that serve as parameters of latent mixture models that adapt via learned update rules. For more information, please see our paper.